six developers, six games, one asset pack, and 48 hours. Over the Christmas break, myself and five other game devs were kindly provided access to the Sci-Fi Worlds pack by Cinti Studios, which is just a gargantuan pack. There's over 1,200 prefabs. This includes like vehicles, props, buildings, terrain, skyboxes. It's just, it's a really good pack. What's better yet is that for the next two weeks, if you use the link in the description, you can get an exclusive discount on their packs, which can be used with both Unity and Unreal Engine. And we couldn't decide whether we wanted to do a past the project style video or a kind of mini art jam. So I put the poll out to you lovely folks and these were the results. Yes, we were doing an art jam. Amongst our well-deserved festive rest, we set aside 48 hours to work on our games. Keep in mind, the 48 hours was a maximum, not a minimum, so some people couldn't fill the full 48 hours, probably too busy stuffing themselves with turkey and chocolate. I know I was. In this video, we'll see what each dev managed to create and how they used their allotted time. So without further ado, let's get into it, starting with yours truly. When I arranged this collab, I had all of the time in the world ahead of me, but just before Christmas, I welcomed this little monster into my home, and who knew that raising a puppy would be so time-consuming? So, my original idea to spend two or three solid days working on this turned into working an hour here and there as and when I could, usually whilst the pup was asleep. The first thing I did was start a new project, of course, import the asset pack and take a look at the demo scenes to see what I was working with. This was the largest Cinti pack I had worked with and I did struggle to settle on an idea at first, you know, paralysed by choice, but eventually I did settle on an idea. I was going to create a scavenging game where you had to collect resources to repair your ship to get off the planet. I took a look at the characters that come with the asset pack and I did try to get some Mixamo animations working with them, but, and it's worth bearing this in mind throughout this. I haven't actually used Unity in many months, I've been solely Unreal Engine based for a while now and I'd completely forgotten everything and I just couldn't get this rig to work and because of the time limit I couldn't spend ages trying to refresh myself so instead I changed course slightly. Instead of a person running around, you're in a hovercraft which makes things much easier as the nav mesh agent does the movement for you and you just need to tell it where to go. So I created a simple RTS style movement controller to send the hovercraft move in. Now that I could move, I added in the functionality to mine either metal scrap or fuel from organic objects and store this in the hovercraft. When it came to world design, the pack actually had some great demo scenes already set up, so to save some time, I copied the terrain from one of these levels into my own scene. Some tweaking commenced to get the nav mesh playing nicely with the new terrain, and suddenly we had a world to explore. I then boxed off the playable area with some scrap meshes and did more tweaking to the overall layout and nav mesh. At this point I then added some trails to the hovercraft as well as a hover animation to make it a little more dynamic and interesting to look at. It was then time to set up the variations of the resource prefabs and dot them around the map to allow the player to gather enough to refuel their main ship and get off the planet. With the resources spread around, I thought I'd implement a little mini-map so the player can easily identify what is a resource and what might just be part of the scenery. And it was around this point that I realised because of my lack of skill within Unity from not using it for so long, I was going to have to massively reduce the scope of what I wanted to create because everything was taking twice as long as I thought. The plan originally was to have drones flying around and either attacking the player or stealing their resources which they may have dropped off at their ship. This would have made for a more complete game loop, but time was running short. Instead, I decided to make it more of a short narrative style game, so I implemented these monoliths that when interacted with, present a small story to the player and also upgrade the player's ship to make the resource collection aspect more efficient the longer the game goes on. Going from a stressful enemy ridden game to a chill exploration style game was definitely a good move as it allowed me to actually get a game with a start and end where if I'd gone the other route I think I'd have run down the clock and not had a complete finishable project. With this done it was time to create a start screen to get some backstory and instructions and also a win state so the player knows that the game is over. This meant making a main menu with a nice little intro cinematic, followed by an outro cinematic that sees the player leave the planet in their main ship, which by this point had changed to a cargo type ship rather than the rocket. From this point on, it was just bug fixing. There was a lot of little issues, which I think I've hopefully ironed out now. Uh, and then I uploaded the end project and sent it to the other devs to see what they thought. Following the end of the 48 hour dev time, I did some slight tidying up as there was a few leftover bits that were nagging at me. So on the itch page, you'll find two builds. The one that was from when time was up in the jam, and the one I spent another hour or two on. And with that, my time was up, 
you can play Monolith on itch with the link in the description. So time to hear from the next developer. So I started off brainstorming by looking through the assets, trying to gather inspiration with what players can interact with, or what game scenario they could be facing. After looking at the character models, I decided to go with something at least first person since I could already see myself scoping way too big otherwise. Another idea I just thought of, you start off in one of these pods and you only have a certain amount of oxygen and you have to get to your ship. But obviously the whole distance to your ship is too far. And so you have these like little pod bunker things you have to go along the way. I kept looking for environmental inspiration, but I decided to come back to the pre-made scenes later, but that wasn't until I stumbled across this first. They've got like little warthog like things. That's sick. Oh, part of me wants to make one rideable. Oh, I totally could. Hey, I totally could as well. So in the game scene, I first got to work creating the terrain picking textures and setting up the start and end point of the game. After which I then moved on to the first person controller. I saw this free uh, character controller for prototyping and I'm interested to check it out. So obviously this is a jam thing. Um, I want to do as much as I can in terms of reading forums and understanding code. I've never tried some before, so I think I'm going to give this one a look. Once that was set up, I got to work extending it, creating a new script that would store the variables and functions for the oxygen, health and ammo. And at the time, I was wondering if it would be better to have an if or while loop when losing oxygen. And since I always use if statements more, I asked ChatGPT, hey, when can I use if and while loops? Which one's better? And it said while well, loops are fine, even though in my past experience they have not been. And despite that, I still decided to use them. And then this happened. All right. Oh, 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 oh. I broke it. That while loop broke it. I knew it. I knew the while loop would break in the update function. GPT didn't tell me. It said, yeah, you can use while loop both, you know, in whenever you want. Ah, did I save stuff? I hope I did. Uh, uh. So I quickly did everything again. Well, it was quick for you at least. This time though, I added more UI elements to help me debug. And of course, players need to know their stats as well. I then moved on to writing a Raycast script so players could collect items and then added a gun for players to shoot as well. I also figured out how to use different cameras as layers so I could change the uh, field of view for the gun and stop any of the environment clipping into the weapon. And once that was out of the way, the environment was looking pretty empty. So I started to fill it out more, going with a jagged rock area to start us off and then becoming more open as the player reaches the sand dunes. To add more atmosphere to the game, I included a point light in all the bunker prefabs. So when players would enter to uh, keep their oxygen, I animated the light to flicker. Then I continued by placing objects players could collect through the scene and tried building ramps the players could drive up with their buggy. Yes, you heard it right. I decided to make a car controller as well. <laughs> After following a tutorial on YouTube, I had wheels, a rigid body, some colliders and a script along with some interesting results. So after much finicking and nearly pulling my hair out, we had something workable that players could hop in and out of and drive, of course. And then we can just drive around. There we go. Oh, this is awesome. Next were the drone. I decided to use Unity's AI system using nav agents and just added a small floating animation to the drones to give players the impression that they were flying. The drones were probably the trickiest part to implement because I had to deal with navigation meshes, baking the entire scene, setting up colliders for the drones to trigger a follow action on the player, making them look at the player and shoot, and just keeping up with all of this without them completely bugging out as my time got more and more restrictive. It was at this point I left to have dinner and realized afterwards when I returned, that I'd left the recording on for the whole time. But when I did get back to work, it was more level design and set dressing, playtesting interactions with the drones and the players, figuring out firing patterns for the drones, updating the loops for everything, and adding things like sound and particles so the player could actually tell more easily what was going on. It was at this point that things got quite stressful, lots of note taking for to-do lists and compromises I'd have to make if I didn't do things in time. But luckily everything got done and working 
in a somewhat stable fashion, I would say. After this, I added in a few more sounds and got the scene's environment into a more presentable format. And it was at this point I was happy to call the game done, adding in credits, a game over screen, and any of the final fixes that was game breaking that, that I was aware of. And there you have it. I present to you all Oxy Gone, an FPS survival sci-fi game. Hello everyone, this is Ramiz from Binary Lunar and it's a great pleasure to join the guys in this challenge to create a game using one single asset pack. It is the Polygon Sci-Fi Worlds by Sanity, started by checking the available scenes. So I'll choose this scene to start with it, but also let's check the available assets to know what type of game I should do. Seems we have a lot of nice characters, some with suits, some seems good magicians but what grabbed my attention that there is a lot of good models of weapons so maybe i start building a first person shooter game i always wanted that but i didn't get a chance to do it before so i think maybe starting with a sci-fi pistol would be great so the first thing to do is to create the first person movement controller and as you can see we can now look around, move, sprint and even crouching. Then created a weapon controller which allows you to uh, equip weapons and animate trigger walk animation when you move with your character and also allows you to choose projectiles and due to the limited time I only created one weapon with plasma projectile that triggers also a particle effect when it hits something. After that I created or added some sound effects to make the game alive. So I added footstep sounds, the projectile shooting and hitting sound effects in addition to some ambient sound effects. Also I have added as you can see some UI to show the player health and also a pose screen. Next, I added jumping mechanics, seems I forgot to do that when creating the movement controller and added the jumping sound effect too. Now it's time to add the enemies and I found this nice drone from the asset pack and decided to use it as the first enemy. So I did create an enemy logic and added a health bar to it, then created some animations so this is the idle animation and of course for the enemy to be able to follow the player i added a nav mesh agent to the enemy so it follows the player when the player gets closer to it and of course i have added a nav mesh so the enemies knows where to move around the map without colliding with the obstacles and what is better than Metal Gear Solid alert sound effect to trigger the alert for the drone. And now as you can see we can have some action trying to kill the drones. So the drones will hit you badly so I decided you need to kill them and then they will drop a healing. Next I have added an objective system to show you which is the current objective and added an initial objective to destroy all the drones in the air. Once you destroy the first drone you will get notification that you destroyed one out of 20 drones in the map and so on till you destroy them all. Next I have added some juice to the game by adding camera shakes and some vignette when you get damage and also some lens distortion when you destroy a drone. And after adding a menu and some music, here is the final results. Enjoy destroying drones. Hey there, my name is Jordan and I'm the developer at Legend Dev. So for this jam, I've come up with what is a really unique and exciting idea, a rhythm game that also doubles down as a tower defense game. So first I took a look into the Sinti Studio pack we provided. It is a behemoth of a pack with 
too much content to go by. So I create a prototype by getting a beat manager in and checking to see if I can make things hit on a beat. Next up, it's all about level design. I wanted to create an environment that was in a snowy Christmassy feel for the winter period. Once I got my towers in, I wanted to work on things like firing, projectiles and targeting, but I wanted to go that extra step further and make so each tower attacks on a beat. To make my tower defense game a little bit more exciting, I need to add some rhythmic elements. So I now have a rhythm bar along the top that just counts to the beat. And we'll come back to that later. So next I worked on stuff like the towers placement. So being able to actually click and place the tower. And then once I set up the tower elements and displayed their cost, I then started working on actually displaying the stats of a tower. So this would be in a box in the bottom right corner. So then I implemented the movement of characters. So this would be when they move on every single beat. Then once that was working, I got some visual setup. So they have UI, they have actual visualization rather than it being a sphere. Lastly, I added in the sniper tower. It attacks two times every eight beats and it always does it on the last two. As I was working on the game, I realized I was missing a really crucial point. It has no rhythm elements to it. And that's when me and my friends had a breakthrough idea. I would reward players with multiple perfect scores with extra damage and extra cash. And if you miss, then that combo is broken and you lose some of that value. Then to top it all off, I added in some last bit of features like a tutorial on how to play, because this makes no sense otherwise, and a end screen and some audio sound effects. It was a refreshing change to work on something very new and very unique to what I typically work on. On to the next person. Hey guys, I'm Cyrilly B and I do some game dev and game dev tutorials here on YouTube. So when I was invited to this gem, I was very excited to develop a game with the Sinti Sci-Fi Worlds asset package. The only problem was that of the 48 hours we had to develop it, I only had about 12 hours in total I could spend working on it. So the first order of business was to not overscope, which was very hard while looking around the assets, because seeing these alien worlds was inspiring me to create entire galaxies. But since No Man's Sky 2.0 was definitely not happening in 12 hours, I had to settle for something smaller, way smaller. Then, while looking around the explorer scene, which has a neat looking base, I got inspired to create a simple base building game. So I started working on that. The first part of development was just brainstorming what the building area would look like and what buildings I would have. I settled on a 5x5 grid that starts with a core that every building has to connect to. I decided to work with a money versus workers dynamic. Every round you get 3 buildings that you can choose to position on the board. The dorms will provide you with workers, so I made a simple dorm that houses 10 workers and a bigger dorm that houses 20 workers. Then I made the working stations where you need workers to generate cash every round. I had the research center, the scrapyard, and later on I did the solar plant. Also, to help connect it all, I created corridors with lots of different openings. The cash that you generate on the stations is used to roll for a next round, to get new cards. I aimed for a simple game, but still I had a lot of things to develop, such as the dragging and dropping of cards into the building area, making it very clear where you can position the building, showing the building's rotation and allowing the player to rotate the building correctly. Of course, it led to a lot of bugs, but pushing through it, I managed to get the basics working. To make the game more interesting, I also added a score and added UI to show the amount of points and money a building is generating. I then focused on the game over conditions so that once you're out of money and out of cards and there's no more building area, then the game over panel shows up and it also has a high score counter on it. There was still a lot to do, but I went with making the menus and different levels. The idea here was to unlock these levels as you play. I ended up not having enough time to implement it though, so I just left it as different levels with different skins. I also didn't have enough time to work on the sound design, so if you hear any crickets, it's not the game because it has no sound effect whatsoever. At last, I gave some finishing touches to the different levels to make them more unique and give them each their own personality. 
And that was how I made Station, a very creative name for a game about, you know, building stations. I quite liked the result for the short amount of time I had to work on it, but on my channel I will be going over the game again and adding all the juiciness I didn't have enough time to add during the jam. Thanks Daniel for putting the jam together and all the other game devs for taking part in it. It was very fun and I look forward to playing all the games. My name is Thomas and I'm a game developer and YouTuber and I got invited into this collaboration project to create a game using the Cinti Sci-Fi Asset Pack, which is super cool. So let's dive into it. This game project was a ton of fun to work on. I was a little bit limited on time with my holiday schedule, but I was able to put together a fun project in a relatively little amount of time. It doesn't have a win or lose condition, so I'll call it more of a simulation than a game at this point. But let's jump into it. I've used Cinti's assets in the past, so I was really looking forward to finding out what was in the sci-fi pack. So I quickly created a new Unity project and imported the assets to take a look. Okay, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. This is going to be very fun. Vehicles, okay. Oh yes, look at all these vehicles. This is what I was really hoping would be in here. I already have a good idea. Let's get going on this. I was really excited to see the variety of vehicles in the asset pack, and I immediately had an idea for the kind of game I wanted to make. But before I started building anything, I wanted to write out a few ideas so I had a clear vision for what I wanted to make. Once I had a clear plan to move forward with, I set to work setting up the scene and getting some basic functionality working. I grabbed a cool looking barge prefab to use as a gas station, and started scripting some logic to get the ships to fly to the gas station. And it was working exactly how I wanted, first try without any issues. Then I set my sights on improving the scene aesthetic a bit. So I threw in some more assets, made some big sphere planets, and some particle systems, and it was looking pretty good. I designated a few locations that I was calling parking spots, so the ships had somewhere to go and wouldn't collide with each other. I also decided to have the player control one of these tugboat ships, so I got a simple controller for that working. This next part was pretty fun to implement. I threw in another asset that I had called Obi Rope, which lets me define rope-like objects in the game, and I thought that this would be a perfect way to implement a hose for the fuel. And this is what I came up with, which looks pretty good in my opinion. I gave the hoses a material that looks almost organic, like they're giant worms or something, and the hose undulates as if a liquid is moving through it. And then of course, the end of the hose spews out particles. I also added in the ability to grab the end of the hose and drag it around. At this point, I took another pause from gameplay and gave the scene another facelift. I wanted to focus on environmental storytelling and fleshing out the area to look like it could be an actual establishment. The Cinti asset pack made this so easy too. It was fun to drag stuff in and see what fit and what I could use. It made iterating on the level design super quick and fun. As you can see here, I had some bugs with multiple ships claiming the same parking spot, but I got that mostly sorted out eventually. The last integral part of the game design was to create a port or valve on the ships where we can connect the fuel hose to. So I started perusing the assets for something that I could use to resemble a fuel port. Then I wrote some code to swap materials when the ship is fully fueled so it would obviously transition from red to green when it was fully fueled. Then I did some more playing around with post-processing effects. And then I improved the player controller so it felt a bit more floaty and had a flame effect coming out the back. And then I pretty much called it a day. So now you can fuel ships as they come in, and if you don't tend to them after a certain amount of time, they get angry and fly off. Like I said before, there's no win or lose condition, and I didn't have time to implement any upgrades, but I completed the MVP and it's pretty fun to play around with. I definitely had a lot of fun with this one, and I'm glad I got to be a part of this project. If you want to watch me play the other participants' projects, you can come check out my channel. But yeah, that's it for me. See ya! So there we have it, six games made in 48 hours or less. I'd just like to thank all of the devs that were featured in this video and took part. You can check out their links in the description below. Some of them are even gonna be putting up extended looks at their projects over on their channels, as well as uh, like reaction videos to all of the games that were featured in the project. So when you head over to their channel, make sure you subscribe to them so you can see if and when those videos go live. And remember, you can play all of the games featured in this video over on uh, the respective itch pages. Links to those are down below. If you like this this video let me know by hitting the thumbs up button subscribe if you're not already subscribed and i will see you in the next one bye